Welcome to another Drug Chug episode. Today we'll talk about H2RAs and how they work. And these are histamine 2 receptor antagonists. Let's get into it. Here's a quick breakdown of everything in this video, timestamps down below, and a short quiz at the end. To first understand this class of drugs, let's do a quick overview. So H2RA, what does this stand for? Well, let's break it down. The H stands for histamine. Histamine, just know it's a type of messenger. It causes something. Basically, it messages something to happen. All right, we'll leave it at that for now. Two is the type of receptor. In this case, it's the histamine 2 receptor. Just so you know, there's H1 and H2. We're going to focus on H2. H2 has to do with gastric acid. And basically, this H2 receptor is a messenger to either stimulate or block gastric acid. And just to be fully transparent, we also have H1. We are not focusing on H1, but just know H1 has to do more with allergic reactions. And finally, RA stands for receptor antagonist. And the word antagonist basically means to block. So when we put these words together, this histamine 2 receptor antagonist literally stands for blocking these histamine 2 receptors and you're going to find these receptors because they're H2 you're going to find them in the stomach lining and the reason for that is because they promote gastric acid but what did we say they're receptor antagonists so we're blocking these H2 receptors and what does that do that's right we suppress gastric acid we also want to know that these class of drugs, the H2RAs, are moderate at suppressing gastric acid. They're not the strongest. They're not the weakest. They're right in the middle. Previous video, we talked about PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. Those are the strongest. These H2RAs are stepped down right in the middle. And since this is a quick overview, let's talk about a couple of the drugs. We'll talk about these in more detail. The first one is going to be famotidine or pepsid. This is by far the most popular H2RA that you'll see. And it comes in both tablet form and IV form, which is unique. We also see cimetidine. This is actually the opposite. It's not popular at all, and it has a lot of side effects. And we'll talk about why later in the video. And I want you to notice the ending for these, famotidine, cimetidine. These H2RAs end in... Tadine. So when you see that ending, most likely you're talking about an H2RA class of medication. Now that we did a quick overview, let's dig a little bit deeper. Let's talk about the actual mechanism of action, right? First, we said H2RAs, they suppress gastric acid. They lower the amount of stomach acid. And when we see how they work, we see our stomach. Let's zoom in. And our stomach obviously holds the stomach acid. But even further, you have these stomach cells that line the stomach. And specifically, we have these parietal cells. And these parietal cells basically have this pump that pumps hydrogen for potassium, meaning more and more hydrogen, being acidic, is being pumped in the stomach acid. So these pumps are why we have stomach acid. Well, attached to this parietal cell, there's two pathways. There's the H2 pathway, which promotes the pump. And we also have another pathway called CCK2. Well, if you take a drug like famotidine, it blocks the H2 receptor. Remember, we said they're H2 receptor antagonists. So if we block the H2, we're blocking this pump from pumping more acid. And that's how we decrease stomach acid. That makes sense. Now what's unique is we can block one side to stop the pump. But your body is smart. And because it has a different pathway, CCK2, that means it can still kind of make these pumps work time to time. 
That's why H2RAs are moderate. They're not the strongest acid suppressants, but they're right in the middle because of that second pathway. I also want to go over some cool pharmacology notes about this class of drugs. The first thing is tolerance. When you use these drugs, they actually develop tolerance quickly. And when you see a patient taking them for two to six weeks, you'll notice that they're not working as well as they should to decrease stomach acid. And the reason for that is because of that CCK2 pathway that's still open. The second thing is, remember their antagonists. They bind and they inhibit that H2 receptor. But what's unique about this class is that that binding is reversible, meaning once it binds, it has a chance to unbind, which proves why they are also moderate at decreasing stomach acid. But there is a caveat to that too. It's faster, but they last shorter. So because of these drugs and the way they work, they actually work a lot faster than PPIs, which is the stronger class that we mentioned, but their acid suppression lasts a lot shorter when you compare them to PPIs. So it's a nice balance of working quickly, but not as long. And it's because of the multiple things we talked about, like having two pathways, being reversible when it binds and blocks. So these are all cool little facts that you could know about H2RAs that really help guide how to treat too much stomach acid. Now that we understand how these H2RAs work, when do we use them? By far, the most popular reason we use these drugs is for GERD, or gastroesophageal reflux disease. That's when the stomach acid is going the wrong way, when it goes up into the throat, basically. And that's because there is a lower sphincter that weakens, or you have pressure on your stomach, forcing gastric acid to go upwards. And if you've ever had this, you know it's not pleasant. Some people refer to this as heartburn. And again, it could be because you eat certain foods, you have tight clothes, obesity, pregnancy, pushing down on that stomach. There's a bunch of reasons. But a way to fix this is to lower the stomach acid, which H2RAs do. Second reason, if a patient has peptic ulcer disease, basically little openings in your stomach that are basically kind of burning because that stomach lining is getting chewed through a little bit. These ulcers are painful, and it's because a patient could be smoking, they could be drinking a lot of alcohol, they could use NSAIDs, which are acidic. Um, it could be a bunch of reasons, but you have these ulcers, and to help with those ulcers, we could reduce the stomach acid. Sometimes in a hospital setting, we'll see them used for stress ulcer prophylaxis, right? If a patient's in the ICU, their body is going through a lot of stress. And because of that, we can give these H2RAs to prevent any stress ulcers from developing. Another thing is more of a rare phenomenon. There's a disease called Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. It's a very rare condition. And basically, you have an overproduction of gastric acid. So compared to someone that doesn't have this, their stomach acid is being produced substantially more. And it makes sense that we can use these drugs to help bring them down back to baseline. And the last thing, and this is off-label and unique, is we can use them in allergic reactions. Now, they're not super popular because we said they block the H2 receptor. And anytime we talk about allergic reactions, we want to focus on the H1 receptor, kind of like Benadryl. But there is some crossover in the H2 receptor area. That's why sometimes, off-label, you'll see them used when a patient has an allergic reaction. Now that we know when to use these H2RAs, let's talk about the dosing. First, we'll talk about thimotidine or Pepsid, our most popular H2RA. The dosing is 20 milligrams by mouth twice a day, or you could do 40 milligrams by mouth at bedtime. There's also that IV version too, and the IV is typically 20 milligrams every 12 hours. And with famotidine, along with the rest of these, you'll see you need to renally adjust it if the patient's kidney function is less than 50 mLs per minute. And depending on the severity of the kidney function, typically we just have the dose. 
So we also have cimetidine. This is an old school drug. The dosing is anywhere from 200 to 400 milligrams, once to three times a day. It's a very large dosing profile. This is a drug that you don't want to take or recommend. It has a lot of potential side effects. And the reason for the side effects is because it is a CYP enzyme inhibitor. Your body, specifically your liver, has all these CYP enzymes that break down drugs. This specific H2RA inhibits the breakdown of other drugs. So if a patient takes cimetidine while taking their other medications, let's say they're taking an antidepressant and they're taking a blood pressure medication that's get, that gets broken down by some of these enzymes, you're stopping the breakdown of their other drugs. That's why this medication has side effects because it increases the concentration of all the other drugs, and that could be potentially harmful in a patient. And then, of course, we need to renally adjust if the creatinine clearance is less than 50. And the last one we'll talk about is nizatidine. Here, it's either 150 milligrams daily or twice a day. Same story, we renally adjust if the clearance is less than 50 again. So what's some general dosing information we could take from here? Here are some things that will help you. You got to think about these H2RAs as good nighttime, mild, or in-between drugs for acid problems. And when I say that, I mean these H2RAs work very well at nighttime acid production. They work very well in patients that have mild symptoms, or they're using them in between other medications. They're very good at what they do, but again, they're not the strongest. And with that, we say that PPIs, the proton pump inhibitor class, will dominate for the severe long-term high-risk cases. This isn't for that patient. This is more for a moderate case of having too much gastric acid. And then something cool to know, the IV version of famotidine, because remember we said it comes in PO and IV. Well, the IV version has to be kept in the fridge. Now we can talk about the side effects we see with H2RAs. Overall, they're typically very well tolerated. So we'll talk about a few of the side effects we see. First one we kind of talked about was that tolerance. When you use these drugs continuously, you do have a chance to have tolerance, meaning the more you use it, the less acid suppression you see. And one of the reasons was because there is two pathways for the proton pump to work, right? We said the H2 pathway, which these drugs block, and then the CCK2 pathway, which we don't block. The second thing, we do see some CNS effects, right? In elderly patients or renally impaired patients, we can see some behavior changes if the dose is too high. That's why we renally adjust the doses. The next thing is called rebound acid hypersecretion. After using these drugs for a long time and then you stop, sometimes you'll see a big rebound in the stomach acid production. It's like a bounce back effect. And the last one is gynecomastia specifically for cimetidine. Remember, we said cimetidine is the one that has all these problems. And it's the only H2RA that has an anti-androgenic effect. And it has a bunch of CYP-P450 inhibitions, right, that causes the side effects. And specifically why it can cause gynecomastia in men is because it can inhibit estrogen breakdown. So when a patient takes this, there's a chance, not always, there's a chance that the estrogen that's naturally in their body won't break down causing them to develop this gynecomastia manifestation. All right, we made it to the end. Let's do a quick summary of everything we learned and then a short quiz. So we talked about H2RAs. We said how that stands for histamine 2 receptor antagonist. And this class of drugs, they suppress gastric acid. And the way they do that is that they block the histamine 2 pathway for these proton pumps. And because of that, it decreases stomach acid. Why would we use these? Well, we said the first one is GERD. We talked about peptic ulcer. 
disease. We also talked about stress ulcer prophylaxis. Some patients that have that rare genetic disorder, Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, very rarely off-label, we can use them in allergic reactions. But primarily, it's going to be for GERD. We talked about some of the popular ones and not popular ones. We said famotidine, which is pepsid. That's our most popular. We also talked about cimetidine, which has a bunch of side effects, and nizatidine. All three of these, remember, we do have to renally adjust. And then we did talk about some side effects. We said how there's tolerance, some CNS effects, some rebound, hypersecretion, and cimetidine specifically can cause gynecomastia in men. So that's everything we learned. Let's take a short quiz to see what we retained. Question one, you have a 65-year-old patient with chronic kidney disease. They started on IV famotidine for stress ulcer prophylaxis. Which adverse effect is the patient most at risk for if the dose is not adjusted? Question two, which of the following describes the mechanism of action of these H2 receptor antagonists? Question three, which of the following is a unique adverse effect associated specifically with cimetidine and not with other H2 RAs? Question four, you have a 58-year-old man, they're on warfarin for atrial fibrillation. He develops frequent heartburn and asks for an over-the-counter H2RA. Which of the following should be avoided due to the risk of increasing his INR? 